The title of today's podcast is this, The Kindergarten of True Spiritual Riches. Steve Backlund here. I am thrilled that you've joined me. Whether you're joining me listening to the podcast or you're watching me record the podcast on our YouTube channel, I believe this is going to be a good one. This is one that has the potential to unlock you in a great way, to cause you to pull down resources, to pull into your life resources like never before to accomplish God's purposes in your life to bless other people radically and beyond. Here we go, Luke 16, 11. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust true spiritual riches? It says this. It says, if we haven't been faithful unrighteous mammon, which is money, Who will entrust to you true spiritual riches? So I want to make a statement here. The statement was in the title of the message, The Kindergarten of True Spiritual Riches. And I believe this, and I'm going to to seek to make the point today that a proper approach to finances, proper attitudes towards finances, proper habits about finances is what is going to cause us to have the character, the beliefs, the habits to be able to be entrusted by God with true spiritual riches, which is obviously every aspect of the kingdom. Now, I know in my own journey with finances, and I talked last week about seven signs of the poverty spirit and shared some of my own battles and journey with finances, overcoming poverty mindsets, lack mindsets. And in in this journey, as a leader, I remember when I became a senior pastor, I felt hesitant to talk about money. And part of it was just bad beliefs, bad theology, which I'll talk more about later. Also, I didn't want to be labeled as one of those. You know, we've had bad models of uh, what we would might label the tele-evangelist model of people who seemingly are just trying to fleece people out, out of money, uh, with various spiritual schemes and pressures and et cetera. And I didn't also didn't want to be labeled as a prosperity preacher. <laughs> One of those prosperity preachers. And so I threw out the baby with the bathwater in, in that, and I went to another extreme of not wanting to talk about money. And then when I really began meditating on verses like Luke 16, 11, where it indicates that finances are the kindergarten of true spiritual riches, they're the training ground for the greater spiritual kingdom wealth that God wants to give us in every area of life and influence, and favor, and spiritual gifts, and authority in the Spirit, I began to realize that I was robbing my people out of one of the greatest areas to equip them in their lives. When you look at Ephesians 4, 11 and 12, in verse 11 of Ephesians 4 talks about what's commonly known as the fivefold ministry. Uh, apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, and teacher. And it says their purpose is to equip the saints for the work of ministry. And I used to have a very, very narrow view of what it, it meant to equip the saints for the work of ministry. I thought it was only to understand the Bible, to only know how to evangelize, 
to know how to operate in spiritual gifts and, and, and et cetera. But I believe this, that to equip the saints for the work of the ministry includes helping people become successful in life to become successful emotionally, to be successful relationally in their marriages, in their, in their families, to be successful in their vocations, to understand how to, how to do well there, to be successful in their physical health. But one of the areas that also, I believe, to equip the saints for the work of the ministry is to be successful in finances, to equip people. And you, you, you look at even some of the greatest pressures in life, and, and we, we can see that financial pressures is one of the biggest challenges that people face in life. What, what are the, the biggest problems in a marriage? Well, Finances is is at the one of the top uh, top of the list items. Financial struggles, financial disagreements, poor decision making, inability to increase income. And so as a pastor, I became convinced that I was going to equip people to be successful. And to equip people to be successful is, is doing more than just quoting Malachi 3.10, where it says, if you don't tithe, you're going to be cursed. Now, I believe that giving is important, and but it's way beyond that. It's helping people learn to believe for finances. It's helping people overcome the poverty mindset that we talked about last week. It's helping people uh, realize theologically that God has uh, given them power to create wealth, according to Deuteronomy 8.18, that God's, that poverty is a curse and that Abundance is a blessing, according to Deuteronomy 28. So it's mindset, it's ex expectations. And then it's finding our, our unique skill sets to how to earn money, how to increase wealth. Talking about investments, talking about uh, how to stay out of debt, how to overcome debt, how to believe to over. And, and so I, I became convinced and I remember when we were pastoring in central Nevada in the 90s, we, we created a financial team of people who took ownership for the financial success of the church and for the people attending the church. They would pray, we'd take the offering, we'd receive the offering, and immediately they would, four or five of them would go into our office and pray over the finances, pray blessing over every dollar, that was given. They would meet uh, twice a month and strategize of how to help our people become successful financially. And it's just it's just wisdom. It's wisdom. Solomon, the wisest man in all of the earth, he had wisdom, and it increased wealth. And so, I, I want to share today. I want to talk today about reasons why, reasons why that I believe that finances are the kindergarten of true spiritual riches. And I also want to let you know, and I'll announce this at the end as well, that I'm partnering with my good friend Jim Baker from Columbus, Ohio area. He helped co-write the book, Help Him a Pastor. And I'm partnering with Jim on a two online sessions that we're going to be doing, two master classes on March 15th. One of them is going to be at 9 a.m. Pacific time. Another is going to be at 5 p.m. Pacific time. 
to master classes that I'm going to be doing with Jim to help equip you to go higher in your finances. And we'll introduce a, a program that Jim has as well that for those who want to go deeper in, in it. But I believe the hour that we're going to spend on that day, those two hours, whichever, if you want to be a part of that, whichever one you want to choose, are, are, are going to be powerful. Now, we're, if you're not signed up for our newsletter at ignitinghope.com, I would suggest if you want to be a part of it to go to our website, ignitinghope.com, sign up for our newsletter, and you will receive emails about this. Now, if you sign up after the emails are sent or you're not receiving them, contact us at info at ignitinghope.com and say, I want information about the master classes on March 15th, info at ignitinghope.com. Now, let's. I want to talk today as we go deeper in about finances being the kindergarten of true spiritual riches. I'm going to give you seven uh, things that will happen that I believe are reasons why finances are the kindergarten. Because uh, as we focus on it, I believe seven things are going to get upgraded in our lives, which is going to make our wineskin able to receive the true spiritual riches of more spiritual power, more spiritual authority, uh, more favor uh, on our lives, more resources flowing through us, more love. So the upgrades are going to happen as we focus on having a proper attitude and proper habits to finances. One of the upgrades is going to be to our priorities. Because we're going to find verses like Matthew 6.33, where it says, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. And so as we as we see finances the kindergarten and as we okay say i'm going to go into a season of of prioritizing a proper attitude proper mindsets proper habits towards finances it's going to cause us to seek first his kingdom because we're going to realize that's a key that we dedicate everything to the Lord. Lord, I give you, I dedicate my money to you. I dedicate my possessions to you. I dedicate my job to you. I want to do it all for your glory. When that happens, then we become a magnet for all these things, <laughs> all the things that we need in life to be added to us. A second thing that will be upgraded as we make finances a priority in our lives is our theology will be up, upgraded. It says in Galatians 3, 9, it says, for you know, no, excuse me, 2 Corinthians 8, 9, for you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that though he was rich, yet for your sakes, he became poor that through his poverty, you might become rich. And so as we focus on finances and we look scripturally about finances, we're going to understand the theme of scripture, again, from Genesis to Revelation, is that poverty is a curse. Financial blessing is a blessing. And we'll realize even, too, that Jesus, when he went on the cross, he not only took our sin, but he took our death. He took our punishment. He took our shame. He took our rejection. He took our unworthiness. He took our curses, but he also took our poverty on the cross. And our theology is, is going to get upgraded as we truly do a deep study in the Bible on the topic of money, on the topic of finances. Now, the Word of Faith movement, which sprung on the scene in the 80s, 
it had a lot of people interpreting things in it. There's tangents in it that were uh, unhealthy. But the two things that the Word of Faith movement basically told the body of Christ is God wants you well and God wants you to walk in abundance. I believe those are kind of like the two twin towers of the faith movement. And I believe if we don't get those right, I wrote a book called Cracks in the Foundation. If we don't get those right, that God wants us well, healthy in our bodies, and that God wants us to walk in abundance, I I believe if we don't get those right, we have a crack in our foundation and it's going to hinder us from being able to build, have God build our lives to what they could be. The third thing that will be upgraded as we focus on finances is our God concept. Our God concept will be upgraded. Listen to Matthew 7, 11. <laughs> 7, 11. If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him? We have a good father. Good fathers want their children blessed. Good fathers aren't sending cancer on them to teach them a lesson. Good fathers aren't uh, wanting their children to suffer in poverty. And I know we can grow from those things, and I know there's seasons of our lives. I've grown in it. But it, again, if we believe that God wants us to suffer, and that's his primary purpose, so that we'll grow through suffering, rather than Romans 2.4, where it says it's, it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. But if we have a, a bad God concept about our Heavenly Father, it's going to cause a problem. So as we focus on finances, it'll cause us to upgrade our God concept. Number four upgrade will be our, our identity will be upgraded. This is Galatians 3. Galatians 3, 13 to 14. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law having become a curse for us. As it is written, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. And as we, I mean, Abraham was radically blessed. And Jesus became a curse so that the curse of the law the curse that we deserve for not living perfectly, it, that thing is broken off our lives and, and we're in a new season. And we, as we pursue financial health in experience and in our thinking, our identity will be upgraded because we will understand who we are in the Lord, that we are a new creation, that we are already blessed. Uh, Ephesians 1, 3 says that we've been uh, blessed with every spiritual blessing in, in, in the heavenly places, and we with every spiritual blessing. That's number four. Number five, our generosity will be upgraded as we focus on finances and the biblical the biblical foundation of healthy finances. Second Corinthians 9, 6 says, he who sows sparingly will reap sparingly. It's generosity that, that really unlocks the kingdom. It started in, in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And it's, it's through generosity of love, of, of really giving spiritual gifts to people, financial blessings. And, and I do believe that Wendy and I, we've been tithers since we got saved over 40 years ago. And, you know, whatever you believe about tithing, I do believe tithing is a spiritual law, is before the law. Um, and 
I've been blessed. I believe there's been a blessing on us because of that. But whatever you believe about specifically tithing, it is clear that generosity and giving on a regular basis and giving a percentage of our money to others is going to be a key not only to become the miracle in other people's lives and not only to help ministries to to do what they're called to do because we are part of a body. I believe it's in God's will for us, unless it's a very unusual situation, that we be connected to a local group of believers that we're a vital contributing part of, including our finances. And we become through that, through our gifts, our money, the representation of Jesus to the, our region and beyond. And so it'll upgrade our generosity. And as our generosity is upgraded, we're going to tap into a spiritual law that's actually going to increase the what's going to come into our lives. Because if God can get it through us, he'll get it to us. And, and it's very difficult to outgive God. Number six, as we focus on money, it'll upgrade our risk taking, our risk taking, because we will not be like the one person in Matthew 25 who had the one talent who buried it and was afraid and didn't take risks in his life. We will be like the, the one who received five and the one who received two. And we will take risks. We will invest. We will there, there we will give. We it'll upgrade that and which is a key to seeing a financial blessing be released. We'll take risks that are gonna create jobs for others, risks that will increase our wealth so we can. Uh, leave an inheritance to our children's children. And then number seven, as we focus on finances, it's going to upgrade our intentionality. We will, we will learn how to save and I know there, there's times where God says, hey, I want you to give a big chunk away. I want you to but investing and in saving money is wisdom. You know, I've, I've, I was blessed early on when people said, hey, live off of 80% of what comes in. Give 10 away, 10% away, and save 10%. And there's many verses that support the idea of savings. Like Proverbs 21, 20, precious treasure and oil are in a wise man's dwelling, but a foolish man devours it. Proverbs 13, 11, wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. <coughs> Excuse me. Proverbs 10, 4 and 5, a slack hand causes poverty, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. He who gathers in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps in harvest is a son who brings shame. So it'll upgrade our intentionality. We'll, we'll start to get an emergency fund. We'll start trusting God uh, in, instead of making payments. We'll save money for the car so we can pay cash and, and, it's it's a process. It's it's a goal. We will tell our money where to go. We'll learn how to budget our money, and and the impulsiveness. And certainly, there's again. I'm not saying there's not going to be times where the Lord's not going to say to do something radical, something that doesn't make financial sense. I get that. But as we increase our financial load bearing capacity. We will learn how to budget. We'll learn how to save. It'll, it'll cause our, us to have the resources at hand to be able to do what needs to be done and not just always expect a miracle. And I love miracles. 
It, God's going to bring miracles to you if you're in need. But I believe where you're going, there will be an upgrade in intentionality. So I know I'm taking a little longer than normal on our podcast today, but this is good stuff. Why is finances the kindergarten of true spiritual riches? I've given seven areas where as we focus on finances, it's going to upgrade us. It'll upgrade our priorities. It'll upgrade our theology. It'll upgrade our God concept. It'll upgrade our identity. It'll upgrade our generosity. It'll upgrade our risk-taking, and it will upgrade our intentionality. And remember, Jim Baker and I are doing a special master class on March 15th. We'll do, we'll do one in the morning at 9 a.m. Pacific time. We'll do another one at 5 p.m. Pacific time. And if you're not signed up for our newsletter, you can sign up for that because our newsletter is releasing uh, emails announcing this. You can sign up for that at ignitinghope.com or you can just email us at info at ignitinghope.com. We'll give you the information uh, that you need in order to be a part of that. Wow, love it. This is an important one today. This is one I believe you could send to somebody else. Finances is the is the kindergarten of true spiritual riches. What a what a revelation! And I bless your finances today. I bless you with just the healthy mindsets and attitudes and theology and identity about that. I speak miracles for those of you who are in a place where you need a miracle, <laughs> and God's able to do that, and He loves doing that. And, and those of you who are, are, are just needing just even more breakthrough to accomplish the dreams that God has for you, I, I just thank you, Lord, for, for that. Hey, thanks so much for listening to this podcast. We're here at Igniting Hope Ministries to ignite your hope. There's no hopeless circumstances. There's just people who do not have hope. And once people get true hope, circumstances cannot stay the same. And remember, too, the joy of the Lord is your strength. We don't need strength at the end of the battle. We need strength in the middle of the battle. For most listening right now, today is just not a good day to walk in radical joy. <laughs> you know, I've never found a time where it's convenient to walk in radical joy. So joy is something that a lack of joy is is results from not having good beliefs. A perspective of hope and joy is the fruit of good belief. So we go after our beliefs, but then also we need to tell our soul, you know what? We're going to rejoice in the Lord today. We're going to rejoice. We rejoice with when we're still, we rejoice in delighting in the Lord when we're still wanting areas in our own life to get stronger, where we rejoice and delight in the Lord with, with unfulfilled desires in our family and things we want to see that haven't happened yet, financial needs, uh, national needs. And it's as we delight ourselves in the Lord, according to Psalm 37, verse 4, we, He will give us the desires of our heart. We will, we will see those things that we want to see happen, happen, that are in line with the heart of God. And it's the delighting and the joy before we see it that causes us to see it. Hey, before we close today, let's do five seconds of prayer for Igniting Hope. You guys are making such a difference. Woohoo! And we feel it. I've been modeling this to attach faith to small things, the principle of attaching faith to small things. And so why don't you just pray right now? Why don't you even pray? If you, if you can't be a part of this, this master class on the 15th, why don't you pray for those uh, who who will be and who feel called just to, to take this season to invest in biblical understanding of finances and to get breakthrough in finances. Pray for them. Also, you can pray for those about 2,000 people or so who are participating in our 40-day negativity fast, positivity feast right now. So... Yep, let's take five seconds and pray for Igniting Hope, one of those, or just for Wendy or me or our staff. Thank you.
Hey, thanks so much for that. Remember, April 28th and 29th, Redding, California, the Igniting Hope, Abounding Hope and Joy Conference, Wendy and I and our team in Redding. If you want to come here, we'd love for you to be a part of that. You can go to ignitinghopeacademy.com for information, ignitinghopeacademy.com, Abounding Hope and Joy Conference. It's, it's happening. And also, I want to remind you, too, that we have certified belief trainers, that if you want to get breakthrough in your beliefs, you want to take this renewing of the mind message farther and higher, you can go to ignitinghope.com and find our <laughs> find our Igniting Hope belief trainers on there. And you can pay for three sessions that they'll do online with you. It's incredible. All right. Hey, thanks so much. God bless you.